and dear students of 11th class medical group today in your botany we are going to take up the secondary growth uh, previously we have been dealing with the anatomy of the leaf anatomy of the monocot dicot stem and anatomy of the monocot and dicot root and today we will try to learn about the secondary growth and now the growth of roots and stem in a length when a roots and stem grow in a length with the help of apical meristem it is called primary growth that is the normal or the routine growth through the activity of the apical meristem is called as the primary growth and now apart from primary growth most dicotly dense plants exhibit the increase in girth also uh, this increase is called secondary growth hope you must have understood this i may repeat apart from primary growth that is the growth in the routine growth that is the growth in the length through the activity of the apical meristem apart from that most dicotyledonous plants exhibit the increase in girth also and this increase is called the secondary growth it is because of the increase in the growth is due to the secondary growth and now the tissues involved in the secondary growth are the two lateral meristems which are known as vascular cambium and cock cambium and now the vascular cambium the meristematic layer that is responsible for cutting of vascular tissues xylem and phloem is called vascular cambium in the young stem it is present in patches as a single layer between xylem and phloem and later it forms a complete ring uh, firstly it is found in the patches between xylem and the phloem and later it grows slowly and forms a complete ring and now the formation of the cambial ring in dicot stems the cells of the cambium present between primary xylem and primary phloem is the intrafascicular cambium intrafascicular cambium the cells of the medullary rays adjoining the intrafascicular cambium become meristematic and forms the interfascicular cambium thus a continuous ring of cambium is formed you may have the view and this is the structure ts of the dicot dicot stem and you may see the different regions in the dicot stem these are the firstly epidermis and the cortex followed by the primary phloem a vascular cambium and then the primary xylem and in the center lies the pith and here you may see this is the interfascicular cambium that lies between the vascular bundles and this is how the secondary growth occurs this ring grows matures and then expands resulting in the increase in the girth of the plant you may have the view these are the different tissues which expand accordingly and the plant increases in its girth now <clears throat> what is the activity of the cambial ring the cambial ring becomes active and begins to cut off new cells it becomes active and begins to cut off new cells that new cells are being continuously formed then both towards inner and the outer side hope you may understand this the cells cut off towards the pith mature into secondary xylem 
and the cells cut off towards the periphery mature into secondary phloem. And the cambium is generally more active towards the inner side than on the outer side. Outer side being solidified. And then as a result, the amount of the secondary xylem produced is more than the secondary phloem because the growth on the inner side of the ring is more active than on the outer side where the phloem lies. That is the reason why the amount of the secondary xylem produced is more than the secondary phloem and soon forms a compact mass. The primary and the secondary phloem gets gradually crushed out due to the continued formation and accumulation of secondary xylem. The primary xylem, however, remains more or less intact in or around the center. It is having its own importance of conduction of water. You may remember that. At some places, the cambium forms a narrow band of parenchyma which passes through the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem in radial directions. And these are the secondary medullary rays. Secondary medullary rays. And this is how the plant that most the dicot the dicot plants rather the trees you see in your locality also increase in the girth being perennial and this is how the increase in the girth occurs. Now there are different types of woods that get formed in the bargain. Firstly we will see what is the difference between spring wood and uh, that is the early wood also and the ottoman wood that is the late wood. <coughs> it, number one from the spring wood side it is produced during the favorable period of the year. That means when the conditions for the growth are favorable. And autumn wood, it is formed towards the close of the active growing period of the year. And second, spring wood continue, constitutes the major part of the animal ring. And autumn wood forms a narrow strip in the animal ring. And it occurs at the beginning of the animal ring. It occurs at the end of the animal ring. It contains larger and wider elements. It is formed of smaller and narrow elements. That is the Ottoman wood. It is formed of smaller and narrow elements. Number five, fibers are pure and fibers are abundant in the Ottoman wood. And number six is wood is lighter in color. Fibers, uh, wood is darker in color in case of the Ottoman wood. And it has lower density, that is the spring wood has lower density, it has higher density because of the small size of the elements of which it gets formed. And these, these are the differences and these are the typical questions which are, which are often asked in the exams. Oh, thanks, have a nice day.